Ira, would you like to start? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, we're talking to Coach Norvell, he talked about the, the explosive play from the running game, mm -hmm. but then needing to be able to, to get some, I guess, important runs in certain situations. Mm -hmm. Have, were those more a result of um, guys just not being able to, to handle the, the person that they had to block, or was it more assignment based? Yeah, I think coaches are doing too. When you play in like real football games like that, they come down to a play or two. Those situational third downs or like to not get in long yardage, it's a multiple thing. It could be, you know, Blitzing and got to be able to hold in there when it comes to to meet a stalemate and win that battle. A one-on-one -on -one block, a leverage block, a call to get the the front or like an ID situation. But it's not just a, a standard down. It's like we need this to, you know, convert third downs. You know, and that's what you know the, the tell of the game was like. You know, when you play a real game, it's coming down to a possession or two. When you watch all the college football, you got to be able to execute those critical situations. You know, and, and whether it be you know a third down, a run. A, Drop, blocking, all that, you know, we just got to be able to do a better job when it's, when it's needed. Yes, son? Yeah, Coach, um, what do you see differently in the first half that, you know, NC State did in the second half where you guys struggled a little more to move the ball? Well, I think, you know, turnovers a little bit kind of counter that we, we turned it over and we didn't convert to third down. But as far as what they did on defense, they, they, they presented a different look. They kind of started playing a little bit more base line coverage so we couldn't dictate a little bit, which kind of, you know, caught us a couple of times. But other than that, it was just more coming down to, the execution in, in needed situations. Brendan? Getting Robert Scott back in the lineup, it, it seemed from the outside looking in that was pretty impactful for you guys. Mm -hmm. I guess what did having him involved for the entire game do for you in the run game? Yeah, Robert showed his toughness, you know, I mean, um, you know, he was limited throughout the week and it was still a questionable decision. Um, but once he made his mind up to go, he went. And um, there was a couple of times, you know, you could see it, you know, what he was kind of going through. But his toughness shows, and, and he's, you know, even last year he had to go through a little bit of something like this. But what's good is that he didn't have any setbacks, you know, so he was able to come out pretty clean, which moving forward means you can get better moving forward. So, and, you know, Rob's a tough kid. Ira? When you have those situations where the key play is a big moment, mm -hmm. you get to a point as a coaching staff where you know these are guys I can rely on, or where does the offense just have to be the offense? No, absolutely. You know, there there are certain guys that that showcase that reliability that you're gonna go to. You know, it becomes you know players are not plays, and that's you know that's what it, what it has to be. But you know, the, and those guys want those moments. But it's just learned behavior right now. You know, and, and I, as I'm watching this cycle. Kind of go through since I've been here is it you know first is you know can you even win a game then is can you win close games now it's becoming can you win close good team be good teams when it's coming down so it's that continued progress of learned behavior as we're going through you know and and, and 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 some hard lessons to learn but just like I'm pretty sure coach said when you come in here and you look at the players on Sunday and you can you know see in their eyes the correction like okay let's not let, allow this to happen again which gives us confidence. Brendan? Uh, Coach Norvell said that NC State in the second half did some bluffing with pre play checks mm -hmm. for, for laymen like us. Like, what, what exactly does that mean, and, and how did that complicate things for you guys? The same thing I said, like, when, it's, when I talked about line coverage, I think line up where you can't tell depth of safeties or corners. And then right before the snap, get into whatever it was going to be before you can check it again, also using the clock. So you got to kind of rely on just basically the instinct of, like I talked about last week, like reaction, you know, because we're not giving that pre-look that we had planned to that look. And that does cause problems, you know, and I thought even toward the, la the, the last half and when that last drive, I started to see the eyes kind of start to pick it up a little bit and, and, and do a better job. But a lot of it, like, we had a play call and, and Rob was down blocking the four. We had a counter call and he gave up a little bit too much penetration that would have been good. So, you know, I give credit to those looks, but I also say, like, the critical situations being able to win that one-on-one -on -one matchup in that moment that you won before, paper throughout the game, but then when it came down to it, did you win it when it counted? You know, and, and so, you know, that, that that caused some structural problems when you're able to change the, the coverage right before it. But I thought we adjusted to it fairly well, but then it seems like you adjusted, but you still don't have the success because you might have lost the block. So it all kind of encompassed together. What's up? Yeah, after Jordan threw um, those two picks, he was a little motion on the sidelines. Um, what do you have to say to him to you know, reel him back in, or um, is there much things you said to him? Yeah, Jordan is not really overly emotional. Something you got to save him from himself from just beating himself up. You know, he takes it. He takes ownership and, and pers like 
he takes it like it's on me, you know, and we got to do a good job of understanding it's all of us, you know, and, and we could have put you in a better situation. We could have put you in a better read. We could have done so much to prevent it. It's not just you out there going to make a mistake, you know. Mistakes are going to happen just like I talked about Rob, the down bump, you know. He, he, I'm pretty sure he had every intention to do it right, but it didn't happen in that moment. So I'm pretty sure Jordan go out there and say, you know what, on this play, I'm going to go ahead and try to make some adversity for us. You know, that wasn't his, that wasn't his plan. So just not to beat himself up and just move on, have that one-play mentality. Can you walk us through the final play, I guess, with, with the interception with Jordan mm -hmm. um, and, and the slot wide receiver? Is yep. the way the DB plays that, uh, is this the receiver have different options on that pattern? Or yeah. what, what's supposed to happen? So there? Michael was running the fade route from inside slot position. And the guy looked like he was set up a gate, like we knew it was. It wasn't like a check two play, it was already in the route. And the guy jumped out outside on late. And when Michael tried to release outside late, Jordan had already saw pre snap that the guy was inside, so he was going to it already. So the guy did a, it was a great play by him. There's nothing taken away from him because he showed, got out of it, went outside leverage, and made a hell of a play, man. So, you know, shout out to him. You guys played, a, played against a good defensive line this year, mm -hmm. um, saw one just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at what Clemson has, and maybe you know, they got David Thomas back, and they have a chance to have another guy back. Um, what are those experiences against LSU and, and NC State um, kind of do to help prepare you for this game? Yeah, it's just, you know, and we see them every day. When we, we saw them in practice, too, behaving and coop and verse. You know, we, we, we've had some good work against good D linemen. It's just a real ball game. That's where you come to play big boy football, you know. So, you know, not to discredit any other D line that we play, but you know, it's a real ball game, you know. And, and to win a real ball game, you got to block a really good defensive line, you know. And so, the challenge would be accepted and let's go practice and make sure we can adequately can block it. Right. How did uh, Darius do when he went in there at guard, and uh, um, and then Emmanuel came back in later? Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you guys feel? I had to pre-plan to make sure he got in there. Um, it was already set. They were going to have some kind of rotational period. Um, they knew that. So, you know, wanted to get there and work in there because he's starting. To, he was healthier, and I wanted him to get some guard work because, like I say, he, he played all five positions. And so I wanted to make sure we got him in. And also with just his speed and athleticism with him playing three down front, I thought he'd do a good job of getting to those backers, reaching and things like that. I thought that could be display some of his strength in his game too. So I wanted to make sure we got him in there to, you know, kind of spell the guy too. Brenda? Losing Trayshawn Ward for the game against how impactful was that, given everything that he does as a as a running back? And then we saw uh, Ja'Kai Douglas on the depth chart this week. If you guys do get him back whenever that time comes, what, what can he do for you offensively? Yeah, I mean, Trey's a you know, ball player toughness. You know, the way he ran and he had some good runs. But he made, you know, even the one he went down on, that was a great run, you know. So, you know, having him in there always helps because he also has the, you know, the leadership in that room that, that steady at him. Um, so, you know, hopefully he heals up and we get him back pretty quickly um, with, um, with Jakai, you know, we, we, Jakai tried to jump there a couple of times in practice last week. We had to kind of protect him from himself. But no, nah, man, you know, we're going to go through the process and, you know, get him day to day and, and hopefully we can use him. But, you know, as of now, you know, we're still trying to work through his progress to see if he will be available. But if he does, it helps us because Jakai is also a multiple guy. He can play receiver, he can play receiver, call big balls in big games. He's also played running back and, and had some good runs in good games. So he's definitely a weapon for us if he's healthy. Two of the guys that we, media and fans and everybody that have praised for their toughness are you know, Dylan and Micah at their positions. But then when they have penalties at the end, the end of plays, like how do you balance that, you know, the physicality and appreciating that, but then also uh, making sure they don't get penalties? Yeah, you play right up to that line and there's an edge and there's a line you got to get to. And those two are veteran players, you know, and they both took ownership in the moment. You know, they, they, they knew they went like right over that edge, you know, and you don't want to take that away from them because that's why they're in a position where they are, where they fight and toughness and it's the mentality, but you also gotta make sure they understand like there's a line we gotta get to that we can't get to. So it was not purposely done. They both showed immediate remorse and like I, I took it there. So just correction and trusting that it'd be corrected. But you know, you gotta let them be them, but you also gotta understand what hurts the team. But and I don't they, neither one of them were like overly selfish. It was just I went right a half step over that line that I needed to go. Tor? The receivers have been playing so well really all year. And they made some plays in that game, but there were some critical, uh, critical drops that cost you guys points, first downs. Um, I guess just the confidence level in them and, and just thinking, okay, that's
that's a one game abnormality, go back to being who you are because you're obviously going to need them the rest of the year to keep making those kind of plays. No question. And no trust is lost at all. You know, it's complete trust in them and, and it is still maintaining. Like, I still, we still want them in critical situations. And just like you talked about on Sunday, nobody knew it more than them about what they had to do. And like we talked about, learn behavior because this is a group that's been together like one time. And that's the first time it's been like that in the game. So it's the now what mentality. So we went through that. Are we going to learn it? I would love to learn it with a win. But whether, whether win or lose, you still had to learn that lesson, you know, whether we made the play at the end or not. So what now? You know, where is the response level of we did that, we didn't have the success we wanted. So who are we really? And that character show up. So moving forward is a, it's a unique challenge. And I think, you know, I don't think I'll say I think I know they'll answer it because I've been with them here these last two days and I was there practice Sunday. So, you know, I'm looking forward to them taking ownership and then moving forward in a positive way. Byron. Seemed like uh, last year, or earlier in his career, Maurice sometimes if, if a team lined up a, a nose guard right over him, sometimes it might have caused him some issues. It seemed like he's had that and handled it better, and particularly I thought on Saturday it seemed like he handled it pretty well. Yeah, a lot of that come from um, Mo had to do a lot, you know, it wasn't because when I, you know, last year I think he played like 268, you know, he was a smaller guy, but. You know, he had to do some things in the offseason that wasn't just, there was a reason why he couldn't hold the weight. So we were able to get with the doctors and, and get all that figured out, and he's been able to maintain the weight. He's also a veteran. I mean, Mo was here before I got here. You know, he played, you know, so he's played a lot of football and, and, and been around him for a while. So as his confidence is building, as he's starting to get his body in shape to go play and the size he needs to be able to go hand, uh, hold up against those nose guards, he's doing a better job. You know, and Mo still got football in front of him, you know, so. He's a guy that was here before I got here. He's still going to be here next year with me. So, like, he's a guy that, I mean, he's going to continue to get better. And then we saw that natural progression of him being able to come hold his own. And I like what he's doing. And also, with Caden Lyles, you know, coming in and bringing him competition in the offseason. You know, and, and, and he'll admit to you, you know, that that changed his focus level. Because I got a lot of respect for Maurice because we brought in an older guy, a veteran guy, to come challenge him. And he, and he didn't bat an eye in his day in college football. He says, you know, let's bring it. And he used it as an opportunity to get his mental part of the game a lot better. So now he's making a lot more calls, and he's starting to see the IDs and the fronts, and his confidence is through the roof. So now Mo, Mo's doing a good job for us. Last one for the last one. Coach, you guys spend all week putting in a game plan. The first half, it, it works so well offensively. Mm -hmm. Is there a tendency to, to want to stick with what's been working, and, and how much of it is still doing what you're doing and having that be successful, and, but also factoring in that they're going to make adjustments and then being able to, to kind of pivot to other ideas that you guys want to be able to run? Yeah, coach came out, you know, in the second half, and we had a couple of formations we hadn't got in, and um, we kind of got into them. And like you said, it can be one in a critical situation, whether it be one block to kind of take your mind off of it, like, oh, we had it, but we didn't execute the block, and we might have had what we was looking for coming out of the second half, but we didn't execute it properly. Um, and then, you know, the situation changes of, okay, are we down, are we up, do we got to press, do we got to throw a little bit more? Like, like, So I think we have to do a better job of having that second half plan. But, that's on us to make sure we can go out and execute the high level we need to. But you always want to go back to what's working to make sure it's working and make sure it, it stops working before you just stop doing it. Just uh, You don't want to outcoach yourself either where, you, where something was working you just go completely away from it because you're assuming that it's going to stop. You know, so there's a little bit of balance in that between what's working, what we know we got to adjust, and adjusting to the adjustment. You know, in that process, you know, we got to keep continuing to get better at that. Okay. Thanks, Coach.